Welcome back to Limbus Company, New Identity Overview, and Patch Note Analysis. This week, we've got the second part of Canto 6, which alongside it comes two new IDs, as per is the norm, Wuthering Heights Butler Faust and Edgar Family Hair Gregor. So let's just get straight into it, of course, with the two-star as per always, Wuthering Heights Butler Faust. Wuthering Heights Butler Faust, it's a two-star version of the Otis ID we got last week, basically. We got a lot of similar things going on here, of course. It's sinking, it's got a little bit of echoes of the manor, it's... Semi blood, it's actually got a fair bit more slash, actually. Um, but yeah, looking into it, it's nothing too special, as is commonly the case when you get a two star of a group you've already gotten a three star for. It's basically just kind of seeming like a slightly weaker version of the Otis ID. It's still more singing, though, which is very good. Skill 1, Confiscation, 2 coin, Gloom slash skill. If target is X plus sinking, gain coin power on use, and second coin inflicts sinking. Standard enough. And the second skill, Interloper Reception, two coin lust blunt skill. On use, target has a certain amount of singing, gain clash power, and they get a certain amount of singing count, gain coin power, and then the second coin inflicts singing count. So yeah, pretty standard skill one, skill two stuff. Nothing really to call out like there. But then the skill 3, Reception Arts 4, Heart Seal. Very funny name for a skill. It's kind of following the pattern of some of the actual, like, butler skills. Like, they had, like, Reception Arts 2, Topple. Like, stuff like that, which was really funny to see because it just kind of made no sense. But yeah, this one's a Wrath Slash deck. And on use of target, a certain amount of singing count gain coin power. First coin inflicts singing count. And then the fourth coin inflicts Echoes of the Manor next turn. And if the target already has Echoes of the Manor, inflicts singing count. Back of the manor, of course, it works the exact same as the Otis one. Um, wouldn't be surprised if this is only going to be like a two Echoes of the Manor or something. If it's going to be slightly worse than Otis's, that would just kind of fit the whole two star versus three star thing, right? Like, oh, inflict two Echoes of the Manor next turn. Otherwise, it seems like she could be decent for seeing again with that skill four against her Echoes of the Manor. It's very chance based, that's the thing. Um, because whenever you hit an enemy, whenever you inflict sinking on an enemy with Echoes of the Manor, they've got a 50% chance to gain an additional sinking count. So it might work out with stuff like that. Once again, a 4 coin skill 3 that only has a single sinking count on it most of the time. Not going to be great, that's for sure, but it could inflict 2 sinking count if you're lucky with a 50-50. I don't know. Moving on to the passives. Defense Hunting Plans. Gloom Block Skill. Unused if targeted a certain amount of sinking. Gain coin power. It's always interesting when they give coin power to a defensive skill, because a coin power is just straight up worse than a actual, like, just straight up base power up, because it means you can only get it if you roll heads, but it's a, that's a minor thing to point out, right? It really doesn't make that big of a difference. Passive, butler style response. Clash wind, inflict X sinking on target, or, but if the target is X of the manor, it's additional sinking. That way you just kind of get benefit of a winning clash by getting more sinking potency. Nothing too special. And the support passive, anticipatory training, when one ally with the least SP hits an enemy with sinking, ally heals SP on self, on hit. I mean, sure thing. Once again, it's... She's nothing too special, of course. It's very similar to what uh, Lotus had going for her, but just seems a little bit worse. Still probably really good for sinking team, because here's the thing. Uh, the sinking team has really needed more sinking IDs, because there's still only like five good ones. So this update's finally going to make it so we're actually going to have some pretty solid options for sinking teams for the full six. But that's enough of that. Moving on to the real interesting SP uh, identity, the three star Edgar Family Hair Gregor. <laughs> Real 
really interesting how we're getting a Linton ideal already. At your family here, Gregor, wouldn't be surprised if Linton's going to end up being like like on the mid Kanto boss if we're getting an ID for him right now. We'll have to see though. I don't know. I don't know if they'd you know do that, but I mean we're probably gonna fight him, which I mean makes enough sense. I was kind of expecting it either way. But yeah, so his whole gimmick, he's also sinking. Doesn't have any unique status effects or anything, but he's potentially a negative sanity unit. Now, this is a little bit strange to say because not a lot of the stuff he actually has seems to synergize around it. The only thing that actually like reduces his own sanity is the final coin of his skill 3, absorbs seeing from the target and gains plus coin boost and damage up next turn. Although it's got a 50% chance to activate the buff effect without absorbing sinking. I assume that means if you just, if the target doesn't have singing, it's got a 50% chance to get the plus coin boost and damage up. I don't think that means it's got a 50% chance to actually absorb the singing in the first place. I just means it's got a chance to, for it to work without singing on the enemy. I don't know, though. Um, but, like, thing is, this is a very likely going to be a Captain Ishmael situation where there's going to be a lot of unique sanity stuff going on. Unfortunately, because these unit breakdowns don't show the sanity tab, um, we don't know for sure. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be super heavily tied to that, especially when we get to this guy's passive. Because it really seems like he's going to really benefit from at least being lower sanity, if not a negative coin unit fully. But looking into what makes me think that, let's start up with his skills. Skill 1, Saber Slash. It's an Envy Slash with a 1 coin. If target is X plus singing, gain coin power. Gain Clash power for every X singing count on target. And inflict singing on hit. You'll notice that basically every single coin in all of his skills, except for the first coin of his skill 2, inflicts sinking. Which means he's going to synergize really well with the butlers. Enemies that have Echoes of the Manor, he's just going to get that 50-50 just every single attack, basically. Which works pretty well. Makes a lot of sense that there's synergy there. Skill 2, Remise, 2 coin, Gloom slash skill. It's also named similar to the Sank IDs probably because he's using a rapier that's all probably they're all there is to it though um on use the target is x plus singing gain coin power gain clash power for every x singing count on target and a clash win inflicts singing count once again project moon really loves their just gaining like coin power clash power base power stuff like that for just enemies having the respective status effect to the point of it kind of getting a little like dull that's for sure it's been dull for a while now really but Still feel the need to say it every time. And if like a singing count of Clash Wind means it's the kind of skill you're probably going to want to clash with a lot of the times. If target is X plus singing, gain haste next turn to the first coin. And if like singing count with the second coin. The fact that he's actually got haste is pretty nice. and means this might be like the new optimal ID for the sake of Garden of Thorns. We'll have to see for sure. Especially given that he's got a very strong looking lust skill 3. This is probably going to be the best Garden of Thorns uh, identity for Gregor now. We'll have to see though. But yeah, looking at that skill 3, Nightmare Hunt, 4 coins slash lust skill. On use, gain clash power for every X sync count and target, and 2 after attack conditionals. If the target is staggered, inflict sync and count, but if, and if the target is defeated, inflict sync count to 2 random enemies. So it just kind of spreads amongst them if you manage to get a kill with Nightmare Hunt, which seems fairly likely given how, you know, it's 4 coins lust slash... But yeah, you can see skill coins 1 through 3, inflict sinking, inflict sinking, inflict sinking. A lot of random singing infliction on this guy. Not a lot of singing count with this attack, but the thing is, um, if you've got echoes of the manor, you might be able to mitigate that a little bit, right? That's the hope, at least. But then the fourth coin is the one, the really interesting one I briefly mentioned earlier. On hit, absorb X sinking from the target and gain plus coin boost and damage up next turn. 50% chance to activate the above attack without absorbing sinking. Now, let's see how much singing this is. It might be like something like 10 sinking. There's no sinking count, though, which is the annoying thing. So it's basically just kind of going to be a one-time sinking loss most of the time. Unless the sanity tab will also give him sinking count. We'll have to see. But he gains plus coin boost and damage next turn. Very powerful effect. Even that's just a single plus coin boost, which it probably is. Like, this is a four coin skill three. If you can, like, get, like, multiple skill of these skill threes back to back, which is only likely going to be possible if you've got multiple skill slots or if you're in mirror dungeon you've given him a lot of skill threes you'll be able to get a like a lot of benefit on this skill three for just using it a bunch just imagine using like i don't know like you imagine like so using this guy solo and getting like six of these off in a single turn and then just getting six plus coin boost would be funny and then the chance above this act of the of the I activate the above effect without his arm sinking. Apologies that I missed speaking. It is early in the morning, as per usual. Um, 
I, I assume that's saying that, like, without absorbing... I can't tell if that means... Fade Dispatch is above the extra without absorbing sinking. I still can't tell if that is saying a 50% chance to not trigger the sinking stuff, or 50% chance for it to still work if the target doesn't have sinking. I hope the latter, because I think this is probably going to be, like, a decent way of getting his SP down. Who knows, maybe his, like, SP unique mechanics are going to be like, oh, he gains sinking on Clash Win, or he gains sinking count on Clash Win, stuff like that. We'll have to see. It might be like a Sun Cliff, but taken a little bit differently. If so, I'm really curious to see what they're going to do about that. I don't even know if these are going to be negative coins, right? Like, if that is a plus coin boost gain, like, these probably aren't negative skills, the thing. But you still kind of wanted to lose Sandy, right? It might be a positive coin that wants lowish Sandy. But first off, the Evade. Do you wish to weep? Funny Evade name. Gain coin power for every X singing on target. Simple enough. And then the passive Endless Nightmares. Gain damage up and fragile for every X SP difference on itself between this turn and last turn. So for losing a bunch of Sandy last turn, you gain a fair bit of damage up in exchange for, of course, having worse chances of winning clashes. This is probably why you want to get a Sandy down. Even if his skill 3 is, like, positive, maybe his skill 1, skill 2 are going to be negative coins, and his skill 3 is positive, something like that. It's really hard to say, but you're going to want this SP to go down a fair bit just so you can get this up. And it seems like it works either way, so, like, you get him to, like, low SP, and then if you get him back up to full SP, like, next turn, he'll also gain a bunch of Sandy, right? Or gain a bunch of damage up and fragile. That's what it sounds like. It might only work one way, though. We'll have to see how it's phrased when the game actually, or when the ID actually releases. And deal more damage for every single point on target. Pretty interesting. It reminds me a lot of what they are kind of trying to go for with Branch of Knowledge on Sinclair, where, like, on heads you lose sanity, but on tails you gain sanity, and you kind of, the passive kind of benefits you for getting multiple, like, a positive and negative coin back to back. Super used, unusual effect that really doesn't synergize with anything, but it's a cool concept. This might be like kind of similar to that, where you're kind of falling in that neutral sandy thing a lot of the times, where you kind of want to flip flop between high and low just to keep on stacking the damage up. And the Zell Fragile is very cool, weakening yourself for the sake of dealing more damage. The support passive, Suffering, this is a Suncliff passive. Combat start when at least SP loses SP and gains Gloom damage up. It depends on how much you know SP loss this is. It also depends if this is going to be a resin. It'll probably be like a 3 Gloom Resonance or something known Project Moon. There's no way this is just a constant thing you can get triggered, especially given how perfect it is for Suncliff, given how strong his skill 2 is. I don't know. Also, affect AADD too, which would be super nice. We'll have to see, though. It's probably Gloom Resonance, so like a 3 Gloom Resonance. But yeah, that is Edgar Family Hair Gregor. Very interesting. I was expecting him to have at least a unique status effect. Interesting that he doesn't, though. Project Moon loves their unique status fixes, and, you know, more unique sinking would be funny. But either way, I'm really excited to see how this unit goes, but it's hard to make any final judgments on him until he actually releases. We need to see that Sanity tab. We need to see how much of a positive coin, how much of a negative coin unit he is, because it's really hard to tell. The only thing that makes me think it's these positive coin is the plus coin boost, and the fact that, like, these SP loss things seem pretty small, but the Sanity tab might change that. But then that's enough of this unit. Time to get into the actual patch notes themselves for this week's update. Fair bit of random changes going on here. Um, updates happening at normal time, as you'd expect. It's only two hours this time. Since last week, it was only six hours because this season was starting. Need longer maintenance for that. New IDs, target section, Rodeon, if you want any Rodeon IDs. Um, simple enough. Next part of Canto 6 and next part of the Battle Pass. New banner for the Limbus Pass package. If you're like me and you buy the funny Limbus package, you know, for a little bit more lunacy, just for the sake of, you know, necessity, just feeling the need to. They're adding a new banner that's a little interesting. The previous banner was really lame, so it's nice that they're doing this. I like the look of this one. You know, Catherine and, you know, Heathcliff, a little, like, ed etched into the tree. Similar to what you see on Heathcliff's symbol. Pretty funny. If It'll just be given to you if you already purchased the pass or if you purchased the pass in the future. Cool enough. Major changes. Background CGs for the main story will appear in the loading screen as well. Sure. Monthly subscription pack expiry notice. So if you're going to run low on monthly lunacy, it tells you. Income buff tools if UI improved. The buff icons under comments rights have been enlarged, which is interesting. And the buff tool tips. Oh, no, the buff tool tips. 
that appear when long pressing the buff icon that are crosshairs are enlarged. Okay. Um, and combat skill buff UI scroll sensitivity improved. Improved calling of filter functionality for the actual combat encounters inside the manor. Cool enough. Um, so apparently the on use effects have been bugged for who knows how long. When someone triggers an on use effect, who someone who's about to use an on use effect gets staggered, it still triggers the on use effect even though they should be staggered then. Which apparently affects a lot of random things. You can see they've got a lot about this here. That's the basics idea of it. So sometimes things have been, you know, going better than it seems like they should have, I suppose. Issue between conditional of Otis. A lot of random things. Rose Banner Merso's text being wrong. Nine to Faust text being wrong. Land of Illusion passive. I don't even remember what that does. Sure thing. Teleport passive. Legger Domain passive. Yi Song support passive. Is being fixed to actually like trigger properly. And so it's actually works on SP loss during ego skill use. Do wonder if this is because of Escu. <laughs> He's had a minor rant. No, I minor rant about that and you know, his railway thing. It's hard to say, but then the thing. Rodeon also, you know, it's being changed to actually work properly. Sure. Bug fix and improvement. A lot of random bug fixes. Known issues. Ryoshu's skill three or Chef Ryoshu's skill three is like working inversely now, so it actually does more damage to higher HP people instead of lower HP, which is interesting. I don't know. And we get lunacy. 500 additional lunacy thanks to you know the issues that they're fixing, and of course the normal weekly 300. So that's 800 for everyone, just so you can get some pulls in the new banner, which you may need to do because uh, that's how it goes sometimes. But yeah, that's all for this week's patch notes. New IDs look cool. Faust seems like a, just another solid, standardish syncing ID, similar to Otis. And Gregor seems like he could be a really interesting ID, potentially like a first good example of like a hybrid positive-negative. Although it might be fully positive that wants low sanity, which would be interesting too. But anyways, that'll be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next episode. Bye!